draw somebody who's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. 838 here, Big 550 KTRS. David Stokes is with us. He is the um, St. Louis Show Me Institute Director of Development. Good morning, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Um, you've uh, the new study that says that St. Louis is one of the most affordable ha- uh, cities for housing. It is the most affordable metro area, metro region for housing, according to a study. We've got a not one, not a Show Me Institute study, but we have a blog up on it at showmedaily.org. And it's a very, it's an interesting point. This is, uh, most people would think this is good news, although it also indicates a lack of demand for people to want to live <laughs> in the St. Louis region. Like, it's not all great. Right. But there, but, there are pluses and minuses to that. Right. More, yeah. and more pluses than minuses, I, I would say. Right. Because there are things... There are, other, there are many factors that go in here. Right. One of them, undoubtedly, though, is not enough people want to live here in the it's first not, place. It's not a fast-growing community, which puts pressure on the housing stock. Exactly. Right. But the, the important thing from the Show Me Institute's perspective is that, you know, we have all these... Ta- we have the, the nation's, if not the most generous tax credit program for low-income housing than one of the nation's most generous programs for low-income housing. We give, we give our tax credits to developers to help put up low-income housing all, all the time. To Heck, the po- we give out subsidies to put up uh, high-income housing. Right, right. Yeah. If, <laughs> and if there's something worse than that, it's the subsidies <laughs> for high-income housing. But We but, do not uh, discriminate. Low-income housing, high-income housing, we will take care of the developer. But, right, the, <laughs> right. They're coming out fine. Right. But the, the point is that pe- I want people to step back and say, realize that we don't have a low-income housing problem for the most part in Missouri, which is not to say that every, every project isn't necessary and that every project for low-income housing doesn't deserve some type of assistance. But we're probably not the right state to have the, if not the, then among the most generous tax credit programs for affordable housing. We have lots of affordable housing. Have you ever heard of anybody, any young person who, even with any type of a job, who can't get a place in the city of St. Louis? I mean, it's very affordable to live there, and that's a good thing, but it's just an, a reason why we don't need to be continually subsidizing more and more more and more developments of low-income housing or any type. Um, yes, you're right. But if we're going to keep the subsidizing Stan Kroenke, you might as well help the poor guy out, too. Well, I think it's all the more reason to not keep subsidizing football stadiums right. and other types of, of corporate welfare. I mean, we, most of the average listeners out there are justifiably going to be more offended at that. Right. And I'm not offended at the low-income housing tax credit. What I am is I want people to realize that we hear the developers, oh, we need this aid for this, this housing Project. Many of these low-income housing projects, they're not really projects. They're, we're going to do a loft development, and because we get these low-income tax credits, right. we have to reserve 10% of our very expensive lofts and give a discounted rate on it right. in the, the fancy new loft building downtown or in Kansas City. It's not as if we're building developments out there for the truly poor with these tax credits. Boy, you have when I was looking to um, rent a loft downtown you'd come across a beautiful building that was completely renovated and they'd have a big giant sign attached to the side of the wall you know, leasing available and you think well, that's a perfect building, it's within walking distance of the stadium and in the Metrolink and the this and that and I can hop in the car and I can get to work and I need a six month lease, with it, but perfect you know, you make too much money. What, what, what do you mean? I mean, you have a big giant sign, leasing available. What's the big deal? Well, you, you know, all of those are sold out completely. We need, we, we need these other ones for low-income housing. So there actually, there aren't enough low-income people to actually f- fulfill the low-income housing that's been put aside. The purposes of the tax credit, which right. is taking money from ordinary Missourians right. to provide a need for low-income housing for... That isn't really there. Right. I mean, the, well, yeah. the need that we have for truly for good housing for the truly poor, that needs to be met, and this tax credit can help with that. But far too often, as you just described, it's not used for the truly poor. Right. It's used for the recent college graduate who currently doesn't make a, a whole lot of money but will in the future. And they're using it in St. Louis and Kansas City where they don't need to do it in the first place. Right. No, it's a, it's a very valid and interesting point. Um, and the whole idea of subsidizing 
the housing for the for the poor. And this we don't have enough time. This takes weeks and months to sort of digest. But in New York City, they used to have rent controlled apartments, and it used to be great. It would be, be awesome if you got a rent controlled apartment. However, what they found out was that rent controlled apartments were never updated. They were never cleaned. They were never renovated because the landlord said, we don't have the money, right? I can't charge any more for my apartment, but the guy who wants to fix the plumbing, he can charge me market rate. And the guy who wants to fix fix the uh, electricity, he's charging me market rate, but I can't fix it because I can't charge market rate. So people would live in worse and worse uh, apartments because they couldn't be renovated and or fixed. Well, that, that brings to mind one of the good reasons why St. Louis ranks as the most, according to this study, ranks as the most affordable housing market in the country, and that we don't have a lot of rules like that. We don't have a, we have less restrictions on where you can build, and we don't have rent control. Right. And we have far fewer of those bills, of those types of rules than you have on the coast, most famously Portland, who, if not I think was one of the top two or three most expensive markets for, according to this study, for people for people to to live in. Right. And Portland has so many of these rules on where you can build and how you can build and the like that that's one of the things that drives prices up so high. And that's why you see places like Dallas and Atlanta that do have a lot of demand, unlike St. Louis, ranking low as very affordable, just like St. Louis, because they too don't have those types of rules. So, so as we said at the beginning, there's a lot of good news to be an affordable housing market. Right. There's some reasons that are not so great as to why we're there, but one of the things we need to keep doing, and we do have a study on this at showmeinstitute.org, about St. Louis's housing prices is we have to avoid putting in the urban growth boundaries or the overly intrusive zoning and other rules. And don't get me wrong, we've got too much zoning that limits where you can put a high rise or that. We're we're stopping new developments in Clayton and University City right now. And we're not stopping them because some of them are asking for subsidies, which is a legitimate reason to object. We're stopping it for because that closed down school has historic value. Well, you know what? <laughs> Letting somebody build in a new high rise development in the loop has great value to everybody right now. And it, it, that gets frustrating, but we have to avoid putting in these new limits on growth and building so that we can put lots of opportunity for people out there without subsidies. Ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, David Stokes with the Show Me Institute. Um, how's the golf game? I played, well, I played well the Sunday. For the first time this year, I struck the ball well on Good. Sunday. Good. It's about time. It was nice, chilly weather, too. Right. It was a beautiful late May day. You're like an orchid. You, you have that like perfect weather, that 68, 6, 69, no wind. You play perfect golf. Thank you, McGraw. I'm here for you. Uh, when can we read you? When can we see you? We got a lot of information up on housing costs and demand and these types of and subsidies that go with it at showmeinstitute.org and I'll discuss this a little more next week but we've got a fundraising barbecue Ooh. for sort of young professionals next generation supporters of Show Me Institute really anybody under any of anybody of any age really it's focused on young people it's going to be June 18th at our offices in the Central West End we're going to have a talk about Uber and ride sharing as part of the barbecue and you can find information up on it at showmeinstitute.org it's going to be for the young and the young at heart absolutely yeah there you go and everybody here is invited there you go um, except for Kelly Jackson <laughs> you're a, she's a little you're a little older excuse me I meant I meant mature and Ke- what are you? We Kelly's gotta go. the top Little of the whipper list snapper. For we got a break. Thank you. Uh, we got a break. 947 here, Big 550 KTRS. <laughs> That's not what I meant exactly. Yeah, whatever.